Hello everybody and I'm super excited today. The time has finally come. I'm going to be starting on my trailer. So we have, we've now got all the angle iron ready to start making the frame for the sides. I've had it cut slightly longer um, than what I need it. I've had it cut 10mm longer. So the idea is that I can, I've now put some tack welds on the posts just to keep them in the upright position. So hopefully now what we can do is get a proper measurement i've done a measurement off the card my card measurement like i say it was 10 mil smaller than what the measurement off here is i think it might be a bit too small what i've allowed on the drawing but what i'm gonna do is use two bits of cardboard as a shim so that'll give me some room to get some paint on, etc. Or get them galvanised, potentially. So I'm just going to hold that on there. And pop this on back to front at the moment. Like I say, it's just so I can get a better idea of the correct length I need. Uh, that's out of the way. So I can pop my clamp on. Got a little bit of wriggle room, which is good. I'll do the same the other end. Get me a clamp. Um, once I've done this, I will amend the cadrawing to reflect that. So the cad drawing was just because the metal was coming in six meter lengths and I don't have a six meter trailer unfortunately so that was the only reason we did it like that but better to have it slightly too long and trim the ends off because there's nothing to say that the steel place that cuts the metal is going to cut it square so I like to always just cut the end square myself just so I know it's how I want it Maybe I'm too fussy, I don't know. Um, so, slide that in now. And then we can transfer the measurement across with the set square in a moment. So get it right on the edge. Okay, and I've already got a mark on it, and it looks pretty damn close. So as you can see that mark there is already on it, that is at what to that? It is at one seven one nine, which is what I originally measured it at, which gives me the little bit of clearance I need for there. So I'm gonna cut that now. Um just cut that quickly with the grinder. And I'll cut two the same length and then we can start getting it squared up so being as the posts are meant to be upright according to the angle meter it should not be too far out There we go, so that now fits in there, so I'm going to put it up on the bend. And then what we can do is we can have the 45 degrees for the mitre joint. So what I'll do is I'll mark up there. 
like so that gives me where I need to miter out so scribble on the inside So I'll cut the other one the same length now, while I've got the square edge. So I'll use this one as a template. So I'll just use my square to get the end correct. Like so, get the mold grip so it doesn't move. Check the end again. Yep, the end's good, so we can now just cut down the edge of that, and that will be the same. Hopefully, it'll also fit in the back. Hopefully. In which case, I could do all four in one day. Okay, so that's the 45 degree lines marked on now, so I can cut them off. Yeah, I've got it uh, kind of like where I need it. Um, I'm going to get some tacks on it. I know it's slightly out square, and he's pulling in according to the set square. So I'll get a tack on this corner here and then we can actually pull it into get me where it needs to be and see how we go from there mm -hmm. might be interesting So we didn't weld the mould grips on, so that was good. That's a good start always. And so as long as the set square is square, then that's good. Uh, I'm going to trust the set square more than the angle gauge. Only because with the angle gauge there is slightly more room for ever. But not showing it as a mile out. It's pretty good to the angle gate, so I'm happy with that. Install that in there. And do the same with the other one. And use that to pull it in together. And I might need to go and get a jig clamp.
hopefully it's square. Yeah, that looks pretty good, so let's get a tack on that. And we won't be far off. It is now time to work smarter, not harder. So, because I've spent the time making the first one, getting it square, I'm going to use that now as like a little bit of a jig to do the others. So, what I'm going to do is get the mold grips and I'm going to clamp the angle iron to the one that's already fully welded. And then, what that's going to let me do is speed up the process of making the others because I know it's already square I don't have to worry trying to get it square and all in line again I can just clamp it down and fingers crossed it's gonna work Got me drawing out now, I've got my dimensions, so I've got baseline dimension going up and then baseline dimension coming back down. So first thing I'm gonna do is scrap the middle coming down and then we can start measuring down for the dimensions, scribe it all up, mark it with a sharpie, and centre punch and drill again. So yeah. just so there's no confusion because the tailgate hinge is here what I've had to do I could have put the bolt here but I've decided instead I'm going to go in here so it's just level with the top I think aesthetically that will be more pleasing for me and do a better job and um, just because the distance from there is going to be shorter than the distance from there to there so um, yeah we might have to hold up with the centre punch again and get on and do some drilling then once that's done what we can do is we can put the wood in drill from the other side and then once that's done we can give it a clean and get some paint on it
just put the put the wood in. The idea is just going to drill through now to mark the wood. Um, we'll have a look see if we need to give it a little bit more free play anywhere. But at the moment, it's looking pretty good. Trying to put the nice side out. The the wood was originally coated by myself with boiled linseed oil so what we might do we might give it a pressure wash and then recoat it just so it looks a bit fresher um and put in the thin strip at the bottom because that is what is going to rot first so it makes sense we only have to replace the thin strip and the other thing that i'm going to do is put some drain holes in the two corners at the bottom as well and i'll do the same on the front <laughs> So we are now another day, another grey, miserable day. Um, yeah, weather's not being kind to us at the moment. Um, where are we up to? Um, sorry about the shaking hand. Put my little glove on. It's a bit cold. Um, <clears throat> yeah, where are we up to? We've got the trailer sides mounted on the hinges now. Um, I've got some bolts in. Need to put a three mil shape. The, the, the three mil shim behind there just to keep it square got the end hinges on just to make it so that it was easy to move um still got a center two to do trying to keep as much of the weather off it as possible at the moment got the ears to make to go on here as well to mount it so that's something that we need to look at so we'll have to clean these welds back to let that happen um but first things first what i've done is i've got one of the spare oh, it's not spare they're not spare they're not spare leaves so we need them got one of the other hinges i've literally excuse me so i'll put it so i'll put it on there like that and then scrape the line at the top behind it and that is because the trailer's got a slight slight bend in it um, it's been overloaded at some point, which is not great. So can't just put them on there and get them square. What I need to do is then um, pull the side down and just make the top fit a little bit better. Um, and then what that'll do is allow the side to, or let the side swing down without the hinges being at different lengths. It's not. It's only. A, it's not even eighth of an inch, but. You know, I may as well have it right and that's it. So first thing first is I need to pop the hinge on there. Like so. Get it vertical, get it upright to the trailer. Um, once it's upright to the trailer, then I can start marking it and pulling it down so that I can get the holes and that in the right place, which is what we need to do next. So yeah, I'm gonna just mark them now. So I'm gonna do this side first, I'm gonna do the other side. So I'll get the square, make sure that is upright to that, because I know that is straight at the moment. And then once that's square to it, we can make the necessary adjustments. limited for space today but it'll be set square I'm just gonna pop it on there like so make sure that the hinge is pushed on all the way and just pull the hinge back a little bit like so until it's square scribe down the side
screw seam at the bottom. And yeah, I just need like this putting on and um, <coughs> what I can do is take the side off to get it in the right place and then refit the side afterwards so I'm happy that that one's up right. And I'll do the same again for the next one. Like so. And once again, set square. Trunk the tail. Okay, so I have. I put a ratchet strap on the trailer chassis and onto the top of the side there just to pull it down because I don't have any sash clamps at the moment. Um, got my G clamp installed now, keeping this on the scribe lines and I've also got that now pulled down to the scribe line on the other side. So what I will do now is go ahead and drill the top hole because that will keep everything where I want it and I can install the First bolt in there, hopefully the drill will fit in. Drill in. Nicely get a bolt on that now, and then we can drill the rest. So at the moment, these are in the right place. We can push the wood. We can drill that. So I'm just going to put a bit of wood behind, hopefully just to stop it splitting all the wood. through all the tabs now so what I need to do is to change the drill um, so I'll probably pile a hole in which is just using an 8mm drill the holes are going to be 20mm um, diameter so I've got my 20mm drill bit um, the Stubs or lugs, whatever you want to call them, that actually these will fit over are 18 mils, so that'll give you just a little bit of clearance. And 
Once again, they all just go in against a stop. The thing we do need to do now is to slow the machine down. Now we're in low one, so low one is 75 RPM. Um, and let's see what happens. So, vice is tight, bed is locked off, so it can't move, and we're good to go. As we can see, there's a nice bit of swap. You can come off equally on each side. So we clear this car up nicely. And steady away the job. Steady away. So it's a lot easier than doing it by hand or trying to use a holster. <coughs> and the thing with holsters is they don't hold the rail perfectly round in the middle. So they're not very precise. Yep, one done, seven more to go, so that's the process. And because we used to stop, we can now just make sure the underside is clean and pop it back in, back against the stop. Make sure it's sitting down flush, push it forward hard against the stop. Lift the vice up, a bit more royal, and off we go again. This is a really nice job for today because it's about 5 degrees outside, it is chopping it down with kale at the moment. I have a warmish coffee that kind of leaks a little bit out of the cup, but I'm hiding in the dry so I'm quite happy today doing this. 